Alright, in our last video we were driving a LED via the MCP4725 digital to analog converter chip and we were using a bus pirate to drive it. This time we're moving uh, further along, we're going to have the prototyping phase and, and working towards making an actual uh, usable product. So this time we're going to bring in the Raspberry Pi computer and we're going to drive the same chip, the same LED, except instead of driving it by the bus pirate for prototyping purposes, we're going to write some software and we're going to use some software provided by the Adafruit Industries libraries to, again, drive the LED on and off just to make sure that we can have our, our Pi talk to ITC devices. So with that, let's go back up to our web IDE that's also provided by Adafruit. We have built upon three files. The I2C digital to analog converter library was also provided and then we kind of took it and forked it and, and turned it into a little bit for our own purposes. And then the Adafruit ITC library or I squared C library um, that provides the foundation for uh, the Pi in accessing the GPIO pins via the uh, SM bus. SM SM bus. Uh, this library takes care of dealing with that. One of the important things to note is the um, the SM bus requires you send the least significant byte first and then work your way up to the most significant byte, which is kind of different than what we showed it yesterday with the uh, the bus pirate. Um, so do note that when you feed the your bytes to the uh, the I two C library, they'll you have to uh, work out ahead of time the logic of of reversing and sending the least significant bytes first. So uh, in general you're always going to import the Adafruit ITC I squared C library as your foundation. For any dev every device you want to work with, you'll have to kind of come up with your own um, library that basically uh, uses the, the Adafruit I squared C and uh, provides a, a driver to a um, main, li main file that will just do uh, very little not a lot of logic, it just uses the libraries with all the detail hidden. So with that in mind, um, all the files provided in the, uh, the blog post here, uh, as well as some more of the details, but um, when all is said and done, you've got everything hooked up, uh, the first thing you probably want to do is just to make sure that your um, your Pi actually sees your I squared C device. So to do that, there's a command you can run via the terminal sudo i squared c or i2c detect space dash y the number one uh, I guess older pies apparently you used the I guess there was an addressing of the SM bus there was a, a zero and a one uh, newer pies anything came out you know late 2012 um, you're going to use SM bus 1, some of the older ones may be 0, so depending on when you got your Pi, this 1 may be a 0. But for our case, is it's 1, we go ahead and hit that, and you'll notice here we have the 7-bit um, the address uh, is indeed uh, hex 60. And uh, if you were to do the uh, add the read write bit in and get the raw address, that would be C0, but um, which we used yesterday in our bus pirate video. But for purposes of the, the Raspberry Pi, we'll be using hex uh, 60 as the address for the MCP4725. So, yes, we can see the chip. We'll go back to our web IDE. Make sure we're in the main dot pi python scripts file. Go down here, enter sudo python main dot py. 
go ahead and hit enter there and we should notice that the LED which right now is constantly off we go ahead and execute this I have some debugging um, lines in there right now but as you notice the LED now blinks on and off and again just some the debugging window saying what I'm setting my voltage to because at the end of the day this is being driven as, a, as a, a digital to analog converter so we're giving it some digital value and it's converting that to an analog signal that goes ahead and drives our LED all right I think that wraps it up. Any other questions should be in the posts. Any comments, questions, you know where to find me. Appreciate it. Bye.